All right, welcome back to part two of lab two on basic C. Uh, we're now going to talk about the programming part of the assignment. And you can see here uh, that we're basically going to do two things. We're going to take two wave files. We're, gonna, we're going to combine them into a single audio file which is stereo. These are monaural files, so they're single channel. We're going to combine them into a new wave file that's a two channel wave file. The processing we'll do in C, we will use MATLAB as the interface between C and the wave file format. And I just want to point out that I've already done a little bit of the work here. Um, I have taken and use, I've, using my audio to bin program that I wrote during lab one, I converted f1.wave into f1.bin and f2.wave into f2.bin. Uh, the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to convert a color video into a grayscale video. So let's step through uh, these two parts. Yeah, this uh, diagram at the top shows we're going to take media files. We're going to go through MATLAB using our audio to binary. Uh, functions that we wrote for lab one. We're going to manipulate these in a C program. Then we're going to take the binary outputs. We're going to go back into MATLAB and we're going to listen to the stereo data. And we could even write that out to a wave file on the output. So here are the steps. Um, in MATLAB, I just described what that is. In C, uh, step two here, we're going to read in the headers for the, the two raw binary input files. We're going to write out a header for the raw binary output file. Then we're going to statically allocate two buffers to hold the monaural audio input data. We'll statically allocate one buffer to hold the stereo audio output data. And then we will we'll repeat the following steps to the end of the input files. We'll read in one buffer of audio from each file. We'll interleave the samples. We'll write out the buffer. So this shows what that needs to look like. Remember, when we have a two-channel signal, we will have the first sample from each channel and then the second sample from each channel. So this is basically just like a deck of cards. I've got two halves of a deck. I'm going to shuffle them together into a full deck and then we're going to write that out to our output file. To convert RGB color RGB video into grayscale video, we're going to do a similar sort of thing in terms of our interface using MATLAB. Um, on the, on, in terms of the C, the way this is going to work, it will read in the header uh, and we'll determine the number of rows and columns from the header. Then we'll write out the header for the grayscale video. We'll dynamically allocate memory. So again, in, so in this lab, instead of doing static allocation, I'd like you to do dynamic allocation. Um, what we're going to do is dynamically allocate enough memory to hold one frame of input and one frame of output. We don't know the size of the video until we read in the headers when we're running the program. And so that's why we have to do dynamic allocation. And then we'll repeat the following steps um, to the end of the file. We'll read in one frame of RGB video. We will use this formula to convert the red, green, blue values into a grayscale value. And then we will write the, the grayscale frame. We'll do that for every pixel in the frame. And then we'll write that frame out to a file. Close the files, and then we're done. Okay, so I'm going to show you, a, at least for part one of this, uh, for, the, for the audio processing, um, some code that I have started here that shows how some of these things can be done. Maybe you don't need this as a help, but um, in case you're interested. So I have a basic C program that I've started here. I'm including some header files. Um, remember, in this in this first assignment, we're doing static allocation. So I have a define here, which um, is, I'm calling it IO buff size. So that's 1024. You can set this to be any number you want. Um, so this is, this is a define. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this uh, later in the program. I also have defined here um, a typedef struct. So this is the DSP file header. 
and it has these five integers, the dimension, the channels, and then the dimensions that follow. Um, and then I start my main program. The first block of code here in the program uh, creates three file pointers. It opens those files, the first two for reading, the, uh, the last one for writing, and prints out an error message if for some reason something goes wrong with the open. Following that, I do the header processing. So I, I create three header objects, um, one for each input and then one for the output. I read in the two headers, as you see here. I copy, I use the memcopy command to copy header 0, to um, which is one of the input headers, to the output header. So the output will have if we go back up and look at what the output is going to have, it's going to have the same number of dimensions. The input files have one channel. The output files will have two channels. So I will need to set um, nchan equal to 2 for the output structure. Other than that, they have the same number of samples. Um, these other values could be 0. And so we'll just do a straight copy um, from the input header to the output header. Um, I will then overwrite uh, the number of channels because this is a stereo. And then I'll F write that thing out to the output file. That's the, this is the bottom of the program. So at the end of the program, I close the input files, I close the output files. And so we're left with this um, statement which says, put your code here. This all compiles and builds no errors or warnings. And so um, hopefully this is a shell that would allow us to then um, put some code in. So let's just go ahead and get started, do a few, uh, few things here. So <clears throat> remember the data is stored in floating point type, and we're doing static allocation. So I'm going to have x0. So here's my input buffer for. Um, input file stream number one. Input file stream two. And for the output file stream now, um, I'll call that y. I'm going to have two times IO because the there will be twice as many values going out as, as coming in because we have to shuffle the input arrays together. Now we have to make a decision about um, a few things. Um, I think the way that I will process through the file in a buffered I.O. way is um, I'll create some integers that tell me how many samples I, I read in from these different files. So I'll have count 0, which will be f read. I'm going to read into x0 size of float. How many am I going to read? I.O. buff size. And I'm reading from input stream 0. Same thing for the other stream. And now we're going to say while C0, uh, actually, you know, before I do that, I think what I will do is I will say, cn cn is equal to um, so I'll just um, keep track of the minimum while cn is greater than zero we're going to keep reading And when we hit the end of the file, we're done. So here's, here's what we're going to do now. I think I'll create another integer, which I will call n as my loop variable. So um, there's a lot of ways this could be done. I'm going to say for, so now what I need to do is copy the samples over. So I'm going to say for n going from 0 up to cn. Here I'm going to say, y2 times n 
is equal to x zero n and y. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to do this differently. So I'll have a counter for n and I'll have a counter for m. This will help me keep track of. how many samples I have in the output. So we'll do that. Now we have copied the samples over. They're interleaved. And now I'll say f right array y, size of float. How many am I writing? m. And I'm writing it to the output stream. Now we've processed through that um, set of samples. We need to get the next set of samples. So we'll just do a few more reads here. And we will also take the minimum. There should be exactly the same number of samples. So this probably doesn't need to be done. But we'll take the minimum. And now we're done. This should work. Let's try building. No errors. Let's run it. It's done. And now we'll go back over into MATLAB. And um, try and remember how to use this program. Let's see if the program, or, or let's see, where am I? This should have worked. Let's see. This is very raw at this point. You're welcome to bail out of this um, recording at any time. Oh my goodness, I overwrote one of my files. All right, I'll go back into MATLAB and fix that. Okay, now I will run my program again. First, I'll build it and then run it. It's done. Let's take a look at the files that were created. So it created this file, which is called f.bin, by shuffling together f1.bin and f2.bin. If we look at the number of samples, uh, the input files have 219 sample, or kilobytes of samples. The output file has 438 bytes, kilobytes. So it looks like it's got about the right file size. Let's go back into MATLAB. Um, and I want to listen to the two input signals. So uh, I'm going to say sound sc x1 fs, for example. If his neighbor hadn't come along hammering at the door, shouting, cursing at him, he'd have stayed there until he died or until he killed him. Particularly, he says they were cooping in the garage. They have like a root in that area, and they dive in trash cans for high-end magazines. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna say y f s is equal to. Well, actually, before we do that, what's the input? What's the sampling rate? Eight thousand samples per second. So I'm gonna say y f s is equal to. I should say f s y um, bin to audio f dot bin. size y, size x1, size x2. So we can see that um, y has exactly the same number of samples as x1 and x2, but it's a two-channel signal, which means it's stereo instead of mono. Let's plot y. Take a look at it. Okay, So we can see that there's two signals that have been loaded in. And let's listen to it. If his neighbor he hadn't come along, hammering garage. at the door, shouting, like cursing at him, area, he'd have stayed there until he died or until he magazine. killed him. It looks like it worked. We could do um, audio 
Y. Let's see, I don't remember what the uh, calling convention here is. So file name YFS. Um, I'll call this f.wave. We'll pass Y and FS Y. And we've just created this, which I should be able to play using my media player. If his neighbor hadn't come along, hammering at the door, shouting, like pushing at him. OK, so it looks like the whole thing worked. And that ends the introduction to this lab assignment. Um, so stepping back again to uh, what's required, essentially what we did is just walk through the audio portion. What you now need to do is, uh, and we used um, static allocation in that case. Uh, what I'm asking you now to do is to go off and do dynamic allocation for the video conversion program and read the, read the video in one frame at a time. Um, hopefully that goes well. Let me know if there's any questions. And um, uh, the TAs and I will work, to, uh, will work with you to get this thing completed. Thank you very much.